The range of what we think and do is limited by what we fail to notice. And because we fail to notice that we fail to notice, there is little we can do to change until we notice how failing to notice shapes our thoughts and deeds. What R.D. Lang is saying here, in other words, is if we continue to see things the way we've always seen them, we'll continue to do what we've always done. And as a result, we'll continue to get what we've always gotten. Until we see things differently, and then we can change. These wake-up calls and light bulb moments, these unexpected events and these uh, hunches that we have, these can be used to help us see things differently and help us to make better decisions and feel more confident in our decisions if we become aware. Today, I'm going to share with you several wake-up calls and light bulb moments that have happened in my life, specifically around my writing Growing Bold and publishing Growing Bold. And I'm going to start off by reading you an excerpt. And I don't know if you have, if you have the book um, on page four. If not, just listen. <laughs> I entered my hotel room and flung myself across the bed in satisfied exhaustion. The late May sun slipped past the horizon, touching everything with an eerie, dusky light. I had drifted along to the music of accordions, to the enticing smell of hot crepes, and the vivid memory of a smiling man and a beret making them. Fields of vineyards and sheep flashed past, quaint little villages built before America was a thought, as I started to drowse. As if falling, I caught myself, jolted awake and into reality, the reality that this was really happening, that I was here in Lyon, France, and that two days before I'd been in Toulouse. I wasn't dreaming. Instead, I made one of my dreams real. I'd spent seven days in France and had seven days left to explore, practice my French, and move past the old boundaries of what I thought possible for myself. Lying there, breathing French air and watching French daylight shimmer across the wall, I thought, coming here all alone and traveling to four different cities by train is pretty daring. You would never have thought of this you would never have thought about this, much less actually done it even a year ago. What's happening? I puzzled over this, but the answer came swiftly. You are growing bold. This, this light bulb moment almost didn't happen. In February of last year, I really wanted to get back to France. But I wasn't really sure if I should. There was the expense of it all. I don't, I'd just been there six months earlier. Could I justify going again so soon and for two whole weeks? Then, of course, there was work. The project I was working on would go live only two weeks before I was planning on, on going to back to France. What if the project didn't go well and there were issues they needed my help to resolve? And finally, there was still that Lingering self-doubt, I had been to France before, but never all alone. Would I be able to manage? My logical mind fought with my intuitive heart, and it almost won. And I thought about those questions over and over again for weeks. But I had this feeling I needed to get back to France for some reason. I didn't know the reason why but I needed to get back there. And that edged out all those reasons I shouldn't go. And I bought my ticket, fortunately. So then Growing Bold could be written. So while I was in France, after I got this idea, I started writing my book right away. Came home the following week, and I continued writing. 
heavy. I wrote feverishly. I wrote four whole chapters. And then I hit a roadblock. I wasn't sure what to write next. So I decided I would read what I'd written so that I could pick up the thread again and continue on. What I found, to my dismay, was were words and paragraphs that were strung together but didn't make a whole lot of sense. It was awful. And this was a wake of call, a call of sorts. I wasn't so sure if I would be able to write a coherent book that people would want to read. But this disappointment didn't deter me. Since I was 12, I had wanted to write and publish a book. And that <laughs> light bulb moment in France was still so, so powerful that I was encouraged and inspired to begin again. This time, however, I wrote down what it was I wanted to convey to my reader. I made an outline, and then I reviewed what I had written before, and I salvaged what I could, and then I rewrote the rest. Five weeks later, I had a draft of my manuscript, and this time when I read it, I was happy with what I found. I realized I had a message, and the sooner I got the message out, the better. But I also realized that I'd never written a book before. And I hadn't been an English major in college. So I probably need the help of a good editor. So I reached out to Deirdre, who had been my creative writing teacher just a few months earlier, to see if she would help me out. And unfortunately, she was in a writing fellowship in Germany for the next 30 days. She did agree to look at my manuscript to see if it was something she wanted to take on when she returned, but there were no guarantees. I am not the most patient person in the world. No. <laughs> so I considered just finding somebody else who was available right then. But there was something inside me, again, I had this intuition that said that our paths might have crossed for a reason, and perhaps Growing bold was that reason. I thought back to the class that I took, and for the first time ever in taking a creative writing class, somebody edited my work and gave me feedback and suggestions that were spot on that helped what I had written be easier to read and make the reader want to continue to read, and I wanted that for Growing Bold. So I decided to wait. I did question the soundness of that decision, however. But while I waited, I decided that I would re take a second look at what I'd written to see if there was any place I could improve it so that when she came back and read it, she could see its true potential and that she would really want to work on this project. When she returned, we met at Panera and discussed what I wanted to do um, and get across with my book. She left with my manuscript in hand so she could take a look at it. And two days later, she called me up, excited to tell me that she would love to work on the book. And over the course of the next four months, we worked together. And it was a pretty good working relationship. Uh, we only butted heads two times. The first was when she wanted to take a story I had put in chapter two logically quit in chapter two, and she wanted to move it to chapter three. The second thing that she wanted to do was she wanted to take an explanation I had put in around one of the activities and just remove it all together. And I just did not see that this would work for my book. I'm a very logical person. The way I had written it made sense and it flowed. And so we went back and forth over these two points. For what? Finally, she realized that I couldn't see her vision. And she said to me, she said, Patricia, how about this? Why don't you let me make the changes I want to make? And once you have the final revised version, you can decide whether or not it flows. I still was not convinced that that was a good idea. But she gave me an option. I could always go back. 
besides, I waited a whole month for her to, to work on the book. Why not let her do what I was paying her to do? So I agreed. Fortunately, she was right, and I didn't have to revert back to the changes. So now it's toward the end of the year, and I had a goal of getting Grown Bold published in 2016. And I was starting to doubt whether or not that would happen. She was still working on the revisions, and I was anxious to have a final version in my hand. So on the morning of November 28th, I was going through my emails, and quite unexpectedly, in popped an email from Deirdre with the subject line, final version. In an instant, what I had worked so hard for had arrived, but I was surprised by my emotions. Instead of feeling excitement or happiness or even relief, dread welled up in my gut like a two-ton boulder. A wave of apprehension overwhelmed me as I began to wonder whether or not I was ready to share my story with the world. Was I strong enough and did I have the courage to be vulnerable and to withstand any criticism or judgment that might come as a result? I wasn't so sure. So that whole day, I stewed over those questions. My stomach was torn up. It was turned in knots thinking about this. But by nightfall, I found myself reaching out to my proofreaders and telling them to get ready. I was getting ready to send them copies of Growing Bold to proofread. So how was I able to move through that fear in a matter of hours? I asked myself one question. And that question was, why had I written Growing Bold in the first place? And the answer was right there. It was to help others find meaning in their life, to help them overcome their fears, build their confidence, and do things they only ever dreamed of. And my not publishing Growing Bold would not serve that purpose. Tapping into my original goal helped me to push through and deliver. But that's not the end of the story. Fast forward four weeks. My proofreaders had finished reviewing the book. I had given approval to the printer to publish it, and Amazon had started shipping copies. I was ecstatic. For the first time ever, I could call myself a published author. I was on top of the world. Until I started getting emails and messages on Facebook from friends saying that they had received their copies of the book. Not only had my books arrived, so had my moment of truth. Would they enjoy the stories I poured my heart and soul into? Would they get my message that life is now? Start living it the way you want to. Make a plan and get on it. And would those activities I included at the end of each chapter really help them do that? The biggest question of all I had was, after they read my stories, would they still respect me? But this wake-up call was different from the, from the first one four weeks earlier in that there was nothing I could do to stop what was about to happen. I'd already set the wheels in motion. So I logged out of social media, turned off my computer, and I went to bed. This was in God's hands, not mine, and I had to let it go. I awoke the next morning feeling rested and rejuvenated, and later that day I got a happy surprise on Facebook from a college friend who wrote on my wall, Patricia. Although I was exhausted from the work week, I started reading your book last night and I couldn't put it down. My fear melted and I exhaled. Fear and self-doubt. These are not emotions that we conquer one time and say we have licked. My story illustrates just that. But if we take steps to move through our fear, we remove the barrier of being incapacitated to the point of non-action by it. If we recognize our accomplishments, no matter how small, if we continue to build our skills, and if we become aware of these turning points, these wake-up calls and light bulb moments in our lives, then we can feel move through them with more ease. 
What are you failing to notice? What are you not doing, changing, or experiencing because of what goes unnoticed? How might your life be different or better if you started to notice, make conscious decisions, and take deliberate action? I wrote Growing Bold to unpack what had transpired in my life. I wanted to identify those things that had grown inside of me that were now allowing me to be more aware and to make conscious decisions, take deliberate action, and then experience things I only ever dreamed of. I wanted to share this miracle with the world. I wanted to give people a track to run on so that they too could experience things they only ever dreamed of. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine that the next time that you have a turning point in your life, in the form of a wake-up call or a light bulb moment, I want you to picture yourself moving through this event, being able to make a confident decision, being able to do, take deliberate action, and then experiencing that result that you want to see. I want you to continue to imagine how that will feel as you move through that dilemma with ease and effortlessly. And how that will make you feel, how the peace and contentment and joy that that will bring you as you move through life more effortlessly. I urge you to read Growing Bold and learn from my stories. Take the time to do the activities and learn from your own. Do this so that you can experience those feelings you just had, at moving through life more effortlessly and in doing things you only ever dreamed of. Thank you.